This is uh, Jim Wonderman from the Bay Area Council. We're just going to give it uh, a minute or so for folks to get uh, signed into the webinar and we'll get started. Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. This is uh, Jim Wonderman. I'm the president and CEO of the Bay Area Council. And uh, today we have the next feature of our Bay Area Impact Series, and it's uh, appropriately called It's Batter Up for the Open A's at Howard Terminal. Uh, this, uh, this is a project I think all of us in the Bay Area have been watching very, very closely. Bay Area Council itself has uh, been very attentive to it. We've done a number of studies that uh, get to uh, the economic impact that the study would have, that the project would have on the city of Oakland, Alameda County, and the Bay Area, uh, which is uh, quite significant. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Our study showed $7.3 billion of economic activity, uh, which is a, a serious economic infusion for the city of Oakland. Uh, we've looked at the project carefully from a number of different angles and found that uh, it has uh, serious positive uh, implications, uh, not only for keeping the A's in Oakland where we think they absolutely uh, belong, but also uh, as a way to uh, you know, move the city of Oakland to the next uh, phase. So I wanna thank uh, everyone, uh, everybody for uh, joining this uh, discussion today. Um, I'm gonna moderate a really good group. And when I say moderate, uh, you know, if you find me to be a biased moderator of this particular webinar, uh, it's probably going to be a fair uh, criticism, because as I'm saying, we're, you know, we have looked at it very, very carefully, and, you know, we think this is a very important project, but it's also a project that's drawn a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of conversation, and a lot of it, I, I think, there's a lot of inaccuracy out there in the environment that bears some clarification. That's been my observation and I think a, a, a lot of folks' observations. So we're gonna to hope to clarify a lot of the issues uh, around this today. And to help us do that, um, we've got the president of the Oakland A's, uh, Dave uh, Cavill, uh, who's with us and is gonna make a presentation and kind of take us through this uh, momentarily. Uh, we're going to be joined by the uh, incredible mayor of Oakland, uh, Libby Schaff, who's been uh, a huge supporter of the project and helpful to it on it for many aspects. Uh, many of the questions around the project deal with the, uh, the Port of Oakland and the appropriateness of having the project uh, join the Port of Oakland. So the chief operating officer, Christy McKinney, from the Port of Oakland will be with us. And this is a really important project in terms of uh, jobs and the economy. So we're really pleased to have Liz Ortega, who's the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Alameda Labor Council. So those will be our speakers. And then we're, our hope is to have a panel discussion and then be able to take questions from uh, the audience. Uh, make sure that you're, um, you're, you're really clear on what it is that's happening at Howard Terminal and uh, what comes next and how perhaps you can participate. So with that, uh, first and foremost, let me turn it over to Dave Cavill, who's, uh, you know, we've all been watching how hard you've been working on this, Dave, for several years. And uh, it's, uh, you know, we know this isn't easy work to do a project of this magnitude. And in the city, uh, city of Oakland, which, you know, cares a lot about, you know, what's happening within, you know, within it. And, and so why don't you take us through the project and, uh, you know, we'll appreciate kind of, I think, getting, diving down to some of the details. So Dave Cavill. Jim, thanks so much for hosting everyone and um, really having a, an important dialogue as we kind of near the late innings um, of our effort to build an incredible waterfront ballpark and development in Jack London Square. And so obviously it's been five years in the making um, in terms of getting the approvals, setting forward the vision, and really working on all the different agency approvals to get this project across the finish line. And we are as close as we've ever been. We only have a couple of votes to go. Um, and in spite of the fact that we've 
facing several lawsuits. I think we have plans to hopefully work through that in a positive way. And we think we can realize this incredible vision for Oakland, for the A's, and for the entire Bay Area, because this is one of the largest projects in the history of the Bay Area, over $12 billion on the waterfront. And I have some slides here I can go through to give folks a, an understanding of what we're looking at doing um, at Howard Terminal, which is really the edge of Jack London Square. So if you go to the next slide, you can kind of see the overview of the ballpark, um, all the different development parcels. This is gonna be right next to the existing Jack London Square area. It's really at the edge of the port and it's on a maritime terminal that has not really been used for almost 10 years. And I think it's important to remember that we, we started working with the port almost five years ago on an arrangement where we were looking at the possibility and the feasibility of this location for a major league ballpark. 34,000 seats, intimate design, Really, um, the seating bowl is very similar to Fenway Park in Boston, which is largely regarded as one of the best stadiums in all of baseball. But on top of that, we've added a rooftop park, kind of like the High Line in New York or Salesforce Park in San Francisco, a park that will be open all days of the year. And it's going to be an incredible amenity for Oakland. People will travel in regionally to come to this waterfront location. You have 18 acres of public open space in this project. The cranes, which are a great homage to the history of Oakland's waterfront and maritime history and, and current activities, will stay as, as pieces of public art and will build an entire mixed use uh, development, a neighborhood, retail, um, housing, including affordable housing, um, really just an incredible sense of energy and bringing almost 3 million people every year to this location will really just electrify this, this region, the waterfront which right now, I mean, our offices are in Jack London Square, 55 Harrison. It can be a little sleepy on a Tuesday or Wednesday or even on the weekend. You know, it's, it needs the infusion of people um, to, to really create a sense of place, to draw more folks in, to create a reason to go there. And I think this can really create a whole new chapter for Oakland's waterfront and doing it in a responsible way that will still allow for the effective operation of the Port of Oakland. Both those things can occur in an effective way and we've worked very closely with the port, with the maritime community to establish certain guidelines and seaport compatibility measures, things like allowing us to expand the turning basin, which is adjacent to the actual location, having a buffer zone for housing closer to the port activity, and really having a transportation plan with a lot of offsite infrastructure that the city as well as the state is going to be investing in long overdue deferred maintenance on this part of the city that can have a tremendous positive impact beyond even the four corners of Howard Terminal. That's gonna help all of Jack London, downtown, Chinatown, West Oakland, and it can do it in a very responsible and effective manner. Um, so this is the vision you can kind of see, you know, this incredible view of San Francisco. Obviously it'll be sunny. The East Bay has great weather. You know, you see the rooftop park and really an incredible, a showcase of baseball on the waterfront. It's in, in many ways like a Sydney Opera House type design. And one of the cool things is we actually got a designer, Bjarke Ingels from Denmark to design the actual stadium. He had actually never even been to a baseball game when he first we first hired him to design it. And we wanted him to look at baseball through almost like an anthropological lens and understand why people attend games, how they come to the waterfront. He had done a lot of waterfront development in Europe and in New York. And I think he's created something that's truly unique and will once again put the Oakland waterfront on the map. So you can go to the next slide. As you can see from the water, you know, an incredible facade. You can see right into the action, incredible video board, you know, really an amazing location. The parks around the actual stadium, like I said, 18 acres of public open space. This is a location now where people can't even go. It's all fenced off. You know, it's just a parking lot. And to open that up for any member of the public, especially folks in West Oakland who haven't really had access to the waterfront, is one of the important environmental sustainability aspects of this project. And it's important to remember that this project, AB 734, state legislation, has the highest level of environmental standards, probably in the history of a project, certainly in the Bay Area, maybe in the state. And so we're going to have greenhouse gas neutrality, lead gold standards, local offsets to improve the air quality. And so it's just going to be a very green project and one that hopefully can be um, really an example for other projects in the entire country. 
And suffice it to say, it's right on the water. People ask about sea level rise. We're going to be investing millions of dollars to raise the site uh, almost four feet to ensure that this will actually be a location that's viable for you know hundreds of years. Next slide. This is this is actually some of the public open space. You can actually see right into the ballpark, kind of like um, Oracle Park in San Francisco, where you have the areas you can look in. But this is actually even more pronounced. Maybe it's a little like Cheapskate Hill uh, at Cal Berkeley at Memorial Stadium. But this is going to be an area where people can actually come and spend an inning or two, look in. It's a non-ticketed area. Um, and it's just very unique to have that connection between the community, uh, between the actual open space and the ballpark and the action and things that are happening on the field. So we're really proud of that. I think it's a really unique aspect to what we're doing. Uh, it's a great community benefit. And I think it will provide a real reason to go to the waterfront. Next slide. This is the magnificent, you know, kind of nighttime view. You can see Broadway just lit up as a key artery. There's going to be a bus only lane that connects um, to a transit hub that will be actually constructed next to the ballpark. And so there's just going to be a lot of very positive transportation improvements that come with this project that will actually benefit Oakland, you know, beyond just the ballpark itself. And, you know, that'll be a, an important catalyst for other economic development, jobs, and other, um, you know, housing and things like that that can be built in the whole Jack London Square and downtown area. But that's really just an incredible shot there. I love that one. You can go to the next slide. So like I said before, you know, here are some of the highlights. You know, we got a privately financed ballpark. You know, it's all private money going into the ballpark itself. Uh, the only public contribution here is but for tax revenue. So that's tax revenue that's generated by the project. It's not money that actually just sitting around for some other use. So that's a very effective way it's been done in San Francisco and Los Angeles to make projects like this come to life. Um, we also, like I said, have the public access to the waterfront, the residential housing, including both on-site and off-site affordable, which is gonna be a critical component of the community benefits, retail and restaurants, office space, a really awesome 400 key hotel right on the water. That's gonna be, I think, a real centerpiece and an attraction for Oakland. Oakland needs more hotels to drive things like conventions and things of that nature, and a performing arts center that we have inside of 3,500 seats, you know, all union operated. I think a great waterfront venue for concerts and events. And I think that'll be another great thing on a summer night in Oakland. Process update. If there's one thing this project has is a lot of process. And so I've been fighting to make sure that process is not the product, but we've been fighting for almost five years to get through all the different uh, approval requirements. Uh, we've had three state bills pass the state legislature. We have an exclusive negotiating arrangement and um, economic arrangement with the Port of Oakland that passed back in 2019. Uh, the Port Commission, we started a race and equity based community benefits process, which is the only one I've ever seen in, in the country, which I think is a great way to ensure that the entire community's voices are heard. We have an environmental review that went on for almost three and a half years and was certified earlier this year by the city council, which was an enormous accomplishment. And we just had a very positive staff recommendation on our Bay Conservation and Development Commission approval um, just actually yesterday. So we're moving forward and we're very close to a final approval. We need that Bay Conservation and Development Commission final vote on the 30th of June. And we need the city council to certify a development agreement with a community benefits package. And those are really the two final hurdles to get this project approved politically and actually in a place where you know, we could move forward and break ground. So that's an incredible place to be. It's been a long journey. There's been a lot of ups and downs and they threw a pandemic in there for us uh, to make things even more challenging. But we are very close to seeing if this can happen. And we're very hopeful that we can get a positive vote of the city council this summer. So I want to turn it over now back to Jim. You know, this has been um, obviously a, a really important process for the A's. We welcome the community input and obviously we appreciate all our partners, Mayor Schaaf, union of support, Liz Ortega, you've done an incredible job of marshalling, you know, all the different unions to support this and, and obviously the Port of Oakland. So it's great to have everyone here on, on the Zoom. Thanks very much, Dave. And I'm glad you're, you're still smiling. You know, uh, it, it's hard to realize it was way back in 2017 when the A's 
actually named Howard Terminal as the preferred site. You know, we've been at this for quite a while, and it's you know it's, it's nothing easy about it. But I you know I, I commend you uh, for your stick to itiveness. No, no, there's nothing easy about this. Um, and so you know, thank you for your leadership on it and for being here today. Let me turn it over. We're really honored to have uh, Mayor uh, Libby Schaff uh, with us today, who's been uh, behind this project uh, in so many ways, also for so long. And you know, this is the kind of thing where you know, bringing a community together around a major positive change is what being a mayor is all about. So thanks, Mayor Schaff, and I would look forward to having a few minutes of opening comments from you on this. And then, well, uh, for everyone, you know, if you would put your questions in the under the Q and A block. We will be able to take questions a little later, but let me uh, happily introduce Mayor Chef. Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you to the Bay Area Council. Um, not only has your independent economic analysis been really helpful in showing to all of the doubters out there, and there are some, that this is an economic boon for the city of Oakland and frankly, the whole region. Um, but you guys have been great cheerleaders all along for this project, and we will need you in the coming year. Um, this project is not without uh, opponents, and that is why it's so important that people become educated about what this project is and what it isn't. And what it is, is an amazing opportunity for generations of Oaklanders. Um, I truly believe this. Uh, I have been so excited about this amazing uh, opportunity for us to give our beautiful blessed waterfront back to the public and to put it into productive use. Uh, Dave touched on the economic development potential of actually activating this land. Uh, right now, there is literally almost no economic activity going on. I'm sure Christy McKinney from the port is going to talk about how it literally is a parking lot with a view. That's what it is right now. And Oaklanders deserve more. I am especially excited about the jobs. I'm sure Liz Ortega is going to talk about them. 25,000 union construction jobs, 7,100 full-time permanent jobs that are not in Oakland now, many of which are also going to be great union jobs. Uh, the public access, uh, we know how important that is to Oaklanders. I mean, more than 18 acres of new waterfront parks, that is an environmental blessing and uh, an amenity, not just for us residents, but to attract visitors. Uh, that will truly benefit generations to come. Uh, and Dave touched on the environmental standards, the ability to clean up toxic pollution, to prepare for sea level rise, and to have a true model of environmental stewardship in a new development, um, all so consistent with Oakland's values. Um, and I, I know that the big kind of conversation or question out there is does this in any way interfere with our economic engine that is the Port of Oakland? <clears throat> and the answer to that is hell no. We will ensure <laughs> that, that it does not. In fact, as the mayor of Oakland and the former director of public affairs for the Port of Oakland, I am seeing how this project has had perfect timing that in this moment where we suddenly have a robust federal competitive infrastructure grant environment, uh, Oakland is now showing up because of the excitement about this project. Uh, we are showing up so much more competitively uh, as we buy for these infrastructure dollars. These infrastructure dollars are going to ensure that our port operations are protected. Uh, and that is something that is needed uh, ballpark or no ballpark. Uh, the conflicts that we are already seeing between trucks and trains and pedestrians and bicycles. Um, we all remember when the historic waterfront warehouse district was warehouses, you know, lots of forklifts. Now it's full of condos and CrossFit gyms and brew pubs. I mean, it's a completely different mixed use neighborhood today. And so these infrastructure investments that are required for the ballpark 
are beneficial for the mixed use activity that we have right now. It's going to make us safer, it's going to make us greener, and it's going to make us more equitable with more access to the waterfront for all the surrounding Oakland neighborhoods. Um, I know Liz is also going to talk on the community benefits. In addition to all these infrastructure improvements, safety, equity, and climate improvements, I am super excited about housing. Uh, I also sit on MTC in the Bay Area Housing Finance Authority. Uh, and we all know that housing is our number one crisis here in the Bay Area. This project is going to produce 3,000 desperately needed units of housing. And the community benefits plan as currently proposed by the city council will include more than 1,000 affordable units, some on the site itself, but most in the surrounding neighborhoods to ensure that this incredible development does not cause displacement in the surrounding neighborhoods. More than a thousand affordable protected units for struggling Oaklanders. Um, that is a huge win for this project. And then finally, I want to assure you that this project is the, going to be the most financially responsible sports deal in American history. Uh, we learned the hard way uh, from our Raiders deal, how a bad deal can be made for the public and that we can never put our general fund at risk. And Dave said it, but I think it deserves to be said over and over again. The only public financing that is in this project are the taxes that will only be generated if the project itself happens and they are the direct taxes generate, generated by the project itself. And those dollars will only go to pay for public infrastructure of regional benefit. The parks, the, the basic infrastructure, the housing, the community benefits, that's what the what we call the but for tax dollars or tax increment uh, is going to help create for our beloved community. And like I said before, this project is actually making us more competitive for those competitive grant dollars that if they didn't come to Oakland, they would go somewhere else. So those are some of the things that excite me about this project as someone who is born and raised in the town. Uh, who remembers when the A's mascot was a donkey, not an elephant. Uh, anyone else that old out there? <laughs> Charlie-o. Um, I could not be more certain about the long-term benefit of this project for Oakland. So Jim, thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk about why I'm so excited to make sure people know fact from fiction about particularly the financial responsibility of this project. And we will be calling on you because there are a lot of reasons that people want to kill this project. We need Oaklanders. We need people that love the Bay Area to stand up and talk about the benefits and defend this project and ensure that it happens. So thank you, Jim. And I'm excited to turn it over to the rest of the panel. That, thanks, Mayor Chef. That was a wonderful, profound uh, statement, and I think answers a lot of questions folks might have about the nature of the project and the finances and so forth. And yes, you know, there's there's always plenty of naysayers. I was involved in the in the Giants ballpark uh, way back in the early 1990s and uh, helped select the site where it is today. And there was plenty of people who said it was the wrong place and it wouldn't do the things. We said it would, and I think it exceeded expectations on many's front. And as far as being a naysayer, you know, I was a, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up actually as a Mets fan. So I didn't like the A's in the 1970s, but you know, you've got to be flexible and you've got to come around. And I feel like uh, this is a time for folks who've been thinking perhaps negatively about this project to give it another look. Do like I did the other day, take a walk by the site and take a look if you think what Dave just showed might be a little bit uh, more exciting and better for so many people for so many reasons. Let me turn it over to Christy McKinney from the port because the main objection seems to be around the use of the port, this port site and the potential use of this site 
for something other than the ballpark. Can you enlighten us as to, you know, how the port sees this and why? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Jim, and thank you to the Bay Area Council for uh, having us here today. Uh, since the port entered into the exclusive uh, negotiation term sheet with the A's three years ago now, our focus has actually been on working with our stakeholders, the city and the A's to ensure this project can be compatible with the seaport. That is obviously paramount to us as the operator of a seaport, airport and commercial real estate in the city of Oakland. It's crucial for us that the port not just survive, but really thrive. The port has uh, been in a long process of evolution and changes throughout the course of the project. Uh, and with the city council's recent approval, uh, approvals of the EIR, which resulted in uh, dozens and dozens of mitigation measures, additional above and beyond compatibility measures, and a critical approval of the vehicle overpass, um, we're much more confident that this project is very compatible with the seaport and the seaport will be able to be successful. And in fact, I think, uh, and really this was touched on by Mayor Shaft and we so concur, the visibility of the seaport, the understanding of its crucial role in the region's economy and job creation has been really enhanced uh, through the process of this project going forward and people learning about it. Um, we've gained a great amount of important visibility about the needs that we have. Um, and frankly, this is coming now with the, the collaboration between the city, the port and the project we will be fixing long standing issues that, this, that support the seaport into the future uh, and help uh, enhance the seaport operations themselves. Um, it's really been almost a decade uh, since uh, the shipping terminal tenants that were at Howard asked to leave. Uh, and they did this because they were pursuing the obvious economies of scale that the shipping industry seeks. So this really what they were pursuing was a modern mega terminal, uh, which we supported them uh, developing here at Oakland. Uh, we had added a significant 100, 600 acres of land through the base closure process that has greatly expanded the seaport's footprint and it's really turned us into a modern facility. Uh, and the reality is that Howard is not that modern facility. It is not the future of shipping or seaports. In spite of the port's efforts to market the Howard property, it just became clear that the small isolated nature of Howard is uh, just not suited to the long-term modern uh, shipping industry needs. And this will be even more so true when in accommodating the modern ship and shipping industry needs, we actually take a bite out of Howard Terminal to enlarge the um, turning basin. This is a critical import to our seaport tenants and we're working hard with the Army Corps and them uh, to pursue that project. Um, it is, uh, I think it was also mentioned what's out there today. Um, anybody can come on out and take a look. It is in fact, the only use we've been able to find for years now is really these temporary short-term um, parking and, and storage. And so that is all activity that can be accommodated elsewhere. There are uh, actually between the city and the port, hundreds of acres of ancillary uses uh, in the seaport area in general. So all of this really caused the port to look at, you know, what else can we do for this property? Letting property in the Bay Area sit idle and not be at its highest and most productive use is obviously something that concerns uh, any property owner here uh, or manager, and that includes the port. The port has three business lines, the airport, the seaport, and commercial real estate. And we pursue all of those for the benefit of the region. And with that, we started looking at what are the opportunities. The seaport, I'm sitting right now looking out at Howard, and in fact, the commercial real estate is literally abuts the seaport, literally abuts Howard. And so we looked at what if this flipped to commercial real estate instead of seaport, if it's not needed for seaport anymore. And that's really when this concept started to take off for the port, the realization that we could, uh, with hard work, and with collaboration, we could make sure that the seaport thrived and that our commercial real estate uh, opportunities uh, also did. The reality is the port exists in an urban context and it always has in all honesty. The housing in West Oakland was just blocks away from the very first seaport operations in the 1800s in the city of Oakland. This has always been true that we're an urban port, we're at the center of the Bay Area. Our airport 
is immediately adjacent to um, housing in, in San Leandro and Alameda in Oakland. So we're very, very familiar with what it takes to run these critical regional transportation facilities in an urban context. And it's a balancing act and it really takes a balanced approach. And that's really the way the port has looked at this. We will ensure that the seaport thrives. We'll ensure that we're prepared for growth. We'll be working with our tenants on a significant amount of improvements. We will leverage what's happening out here, as the mayor said, uh, in order to bring even more money and more commitment to improving the roadways, the access, the infrastructure, the electrification, and all the facilities that the seaport operators need. And we will put in protections, and we are putting in protections through the negotiations, through the EIR on this property that has buffers, that has easements, that has the things we need, the same kind of tools, frankly, we've learned how to use out at the airport to be successful out there. This is kind of an, an old story for uh, airport operators uh, across the country. So we feel very confident um, that this is headed in the right direction and we will be all be successful. Thanks very much, Christy. I think it's so important for, for the folks to understand the, the nature of the Port of Oakland and what it does and what it can do best in which locations. And, you know, clearly I think this was, uh, you know, very fortunate that the A's named this site. This was, that was my original feeling when I first heard it. I said, what? Howard Terminal? Because I could never see it being much of anything, although my knowledge is not uh, is somewhat limited, just was my, my impression. Uh, so let's talk about jobs because jobs are so important. And I want to ask uh, Liz Ortega, who's joined us today, and she's the executive secretary treasurer of the Alameda Labor Council. And I, you know, I think we're all concerned about the jobs of the present, the people who work uh, for, for the A's today, and as well as people in, uh, who will work for either the A's in the future or will work uh, on the project in the future and the jobs that get created by the economic infusion. Can you tell us uh, you know, how labor sees this project and, and you know, what, what you're doing about it? Yes, hi, Jim, and thanks for having me here today and everyone, Dave and the mayor. It's been an honor to work on this project. I think, I believe the Alameda Labor Council, AFL-CIO, that represents 135,000 workers, uh, voted on supporting this project back in 2018. And part of the reason that we voted to support the project was because of the union jobs. We want to make sure that not only do we keep thousands of union jobs, but that we continue to grow. And, um, you know, we have, there is this narrative out there that we are going to lose jobs uh, because of the Howard Terminal. But in fact, as was just stated, the Port Administration has actually talked about that is not going to be an issue. Uh, but what I have seen uh, as an issue is when we lose uh, our sports teams, we lose those jobs. That is a fact. In fact, I've seen close to 2000 jobs being lost when we lost some of the other, when we lost the Warriors and the Raiders. And so my number one goal here was to protect not just the construction jobs that are going to come with this project because there's going to be about 6,000 6, construction jobs, but the long-term permanent jobs. And those we're talking about close to 15,000. If you talk about the long-term uh, prospect of this, of this development that includes not just the ballpark, but the surrounding area. And that's why we have SEIU, USWW, Unite HERE 2850, IOTC, and many others who are part of this project, Teamsters. Uh, in fact, I think this project has the most labor support of any other project in the country um, that's ever been proposed. And I'm very proud of that because Again, this is you know about making sure that you know we keep our communities here in Oakland, that people have an opportunity to work and live in the city that they love. And that's why our members voted to support this project. In addition to just the jobs piece, I also want to be very vocal about the fact that we're very supportive of making sure that we have a robust uh, community benefits package that includes the affordable housing, the open space, um, and much more in terms of what the community has voiced and wanting to have. And that's why um, the Labor Council 
myself and many of our leaders have been at the table with both the community, the A's and the city uh, to ensure this project becomes a fruition and that we all get to be there on opening day and support this community that we've all grown up. Uh, and personally, my dad was a janitor uh, and uh, at the A with the A's. Uh, so going back to you know when I was nine years old, I've been going to games and very proud of the fact that you know my job, my dad actually um, was able to provide us those benefits growing up here in the city of Oakland, having worked for this uh, community. Uh, and thank you for having me. Th thanks very, very much, Liz. And I think, uh, you know, 15,000 permanent jobs, that is uh, uh, labor union jobs. I mean, that is a very serious uh, uh, contribution that this is making in addition to the construction jobs. So I think there's a lot to be excited about. You know, let let me ask a couple of questions and then we'll try to get in some of the questions from the from the viewers. So let's just talk about BCDC for a minute, because you know, at first there was a vote by a committee that said, you know, we shouldn't go for this. Now, there, now yesterday we saw, uh, thankfully, a staff report, you know, from the BCDC, uh, the, the whole commission recommending uh, that uh, in the vote that's coming up that uh, they actually support the project. To me, that made a lot of sense from the beginning because you know we work with BCDC a lot. In fact, you know, their council had something to do with the formation of it way back and you no know, it's all about gaining public access you know, positive public access to the bay and so you know maybe i'll start with dave you know how do you how do you see this bc but others can chime in how do you see this vote uh shaping up i know we need uh i think we need 18 affirmative votes uh of the commission two-thirds vote whether people show up or not so there's a bit of a challenge with that go ahead well i mean certainly the staff report being um positive Yesterday was a huge accomplishment, a uh, credit to the port, the city, um, everyone involved, BCDC staff, uh, Larry, who's the executive director. I think they took a very thoughtful approach. Um, a lot of data was provided, especially by the port. And, you know, I think we're on track with BCDC. We we're kind of off track before when you had the advisory committee, uh, you know, saying no. And so I think that puts us in a great position for the June 2nd hearing, where there'll be a lot of public comment, additional dialogue and debate, and then hopefully an affirmative vote on the 30th of June to remove um, Howard Terminal from the Seaport plan. That will allow us to move forward with the project. And so that's a really big approval that's required. Christy or others, do you have any comment on the BCDC, BCDC process? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, it has been an extremely diligent um, thorough process, and we certainly thank the staff for the amount of effort uh, that they have put into thinking this through. Uh, obviously, at the most fundamental level, they're coming from the standpoint of how do we ensure that we prevent unnecessary future bay fill? And we think we've answered that question in many, many different ways. There's a lot of ways to look at that, and not the least of which is that, um, you know, in the modern era, Bay Fill is not what it used to be 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, the port is built primarily on Bay Fill. That would never happen again. Um, it's frankly, it's not economically feasible. It's not environmentally sound. So it's, we also just see this as not the direction that the industry would be going. It's extremely costly. And so we really think that looking at this data that they have, it's a wide, large amount of data you can make a lot of different interpretations out of it. And we encourage people to look at it and to realize we can meet the future of the seaport. We can meet a reasonable forecast in all the various types of cargo uh, across the bay that they have forecasted. And it's just not gonna make sense for somebody to go off and create new bay fill because some 20 or 30 acres left on a remnant next to Jack London Square was preserved for the next 30 years idle. Jim, if I can jump in, um, one of the things that changed between when that advisory committee voted and when staff issued its pre preliminary recommendation um, just uh, this week uh, is that, uh, and I want to give credit to Christy personally, because I understand that you personally played a big role in this, Christy, but that the original cargo forecast had missed 
more than 100 acres of available terminal capacity specifically for roll on roll off cargo. And that is the cargo type that was at issue in this analysis about whether or not the Bay as a whole, as a, as a whole region, has the capacity to accommodate growth in all the different cargo types that we're looking at. And so uh, the original uh, cargo forecast missed more than 100 acres of capacity at the port of Venetia. The port of Oakland brought that to staff's attention and that really impacted their analysis. And that's something that the advisory commission did not have. Yeah, th thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Um, while we've got you, and and you know, I think you know, Dave can comment on this as well. Uh, you know, this is a big project, and I know there's been a lot of involvement, you know, with the community on this. And I think there's some comments and questions uh, that we've received on this. Is you know, what is the nature of the community benefits agreement? What was it like? What was the process like for that? Where 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 does it stand? So maybe I'll start with you, Mayor. Uh, you know, you know, it seems pretty amazing, you know, the work that's gone into this, but go ahead, please. Well, there are many aspects that are very important, I think, to Oakland's leadership with this deal with regard to community benefits, and they are things that came out of the community benefits process. Uh, good jobs uh, is a big part of that, and that's something where I feel like a lot of progress has been made, um, that, that that one is going to be probably first out of the gate. The second one is a long-term funding source for a community benefits fund that really will be overseen by community members itself. Um, and, and that is unique. That's a unique structure to empower the community over a long-term period to actually choose how to spend the revenues that come into this fund. And the last one, and the city council has been very clear. I know I'm very clear affordable housing is our biggest issue right now. And so to have 15% uh, of on-site affordable housing uh, with at least a third of that to be for extremely low income residents and to use that tax increment, the but for taxes, the taxes that the project itself generates to fund affordable housing uh, both some of the affordable housing that's on the site, as well as, um, you know, we, we'll, we would be funding a total of more than a thousand units, um, specifically also around the site. That is a really important piece of the community benefits as currently proposed. So both on-site affordable, as well as affordable housing in the surrounding areas. Those I think are kind of the main themes that um, are being currently negotiated. Um, there's a lot of paper going back and forth, but from my perspective, I feel like everything is moving in the right direction. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> well, I, I think the framework is solid and I think it's very unique. Um, the jobs policy, which is based on the Oakland Army base, which is probably the only community uh, plan that's like that is certainly in the state of California, maybe the country. And so I think we have the framework set. I think there's still work to be done on the details, but like you said, Mayor, it's happening every day. We're having daily negotiations with the city staff and their legal team. And you know, we're hoping to have the development agreement voted on as soon as possible, potentially even before the, the recess this summer, um, because you know, time is of the essence to get this project approved and, and, uh, and actually built. You know, obviously we spent a lot of time planning uh, we actually do want to move forward with this project, but obviously it needs to get approval. Liz, what's your impression of the way the you know talks have gone with you know with the A's and with the city on this? I mean, I don't want to state what's already been said, but I mean, I think conversations are moving forward. We've been at the table for a long time. I think the framework is definitely there and now we just got to get across and I don't have baseball, <laughs> you know, I think we're second, third base. Let's get to home run and let's do it as quickly as we can. So speaking of that, we're getting a lot of sort of cheers in the questions, you know, they're not really questions. They're like, when does when does the next thing happen and what can we do? So I think that's really an important part of why we, you know, we put this together at this point because we sense that we're getting close to the finish line and um, 
you know, when in the future, if we decide to spend a weekend in Las Vegas, Dave, you know, it's not going to be to go to an A's game. You know, it's going to be for other purposes. So, what's what are the what are the next what are the next steps you think we'll see that and and what can our members and the folks who are tuning into this today uh, do to help make sure that uh, you know the vote goes right with BCDC, which is I I think it's either June second. I think is that the date. Well, second is the hearing. That's a public hearing, and then on the thirtieth is the actual vote. The vote. So there's it's like a two step process, and so. You know, anyone who lives anywhere in the Bay Area can lobby the BCDC commissioners because they're from all over the Bay Area um, on that issue. So you don't necessarily have to just live in Oakland per se. So we need community members and people who are in favor of the project uh, to lean in on that and hopefully, you know, express their opinions on why this is an important project. And then secondly, we really need to get that vote scheduled um, of the city council. And, you know, that has to really be done this year you know, the mayor, this is her last year in office. She's been an incredible proponent and leader of this project at every level. And, you know, we really need to have the vote this year. I'd like to have it as soon as possible, but like, you know, maybe, maybe you know, it's going to take a little longer than I'd like, but this year is really the deadline. And we have to work through these final approvals before we have an election, before there's a new city council. Like that just brings too much uncertainty and pushes the timeline back too far. Yeah, what do you what do you think, uh, Mayor? What should we be doing? And I, you know, I regret the fact that you have to leave uh, office later in the year. I'm I'm a big supporter of term limits when they apply to people I don't like. But uh, <laughs> in this case, uh, you know, you've done such a great job in Oakland at such a difficult time, and you know, we wish you could stay longer. But you know, Dave speaks you know correctly to you know that timetable. What what can we do to get to the end game? Well, and I'm not the only one leaving office. You know, there's going to be a whole new group of leaders that come in in the new year, as, as there often is. And so it just, we have momentum going now. We know this thing needs to get built. Um, our lawyers are madly drafting language, you know, pesky lawyers. I'm a recovering one myself. And so really that's going to drive the timeline of when this thing comes to a vote. Um, there are many different pieces all of them feel like they're falling into place. Uh, we will have a big infrastructure grant request out to the federal government that um, ironically, we probably should know about in the early fall, late summer. So that timing might be auspicious. Um, you know, and, and Dave, when, when are we gonna actually sit in the sunshine? I mean, look at the day outside. Don't you want a Coliseum dog and a Bud Light in your hand and just, you know, watching them round the bases right now? When are we going to get that experience? When is opening day going to be again? Well, it's, I mean, it depends on the lawsuits and all the other movie pieces, but I mean, we, we want to get going as soon as possible and get this ballpark built. And that's why it's incredibly um, important to get the approvals this year. And then I think we could more properly lay out a date, you know, whether it's 2026, 2027, where we can open the new, the new ballpark. And, and that's our, that's our hope. And, you know, we're obviously putting a lot into making this happen. And your partnership has been incredibly important as part of that. Well, and we need people who support this project to show up at these meetings. So please put uh, particularly June 30th on your calendar. Um, we need folks at that BCDC meeting. Um, this requires a two thirds vote. Uh, it is awesome that the initial staff recommendation is positive for the project, but that can change. And so people who see this vision for Oakland and our region have got to be louder and prouder about it. Absolutely. And Emily Loper has put in the chat information about the BCDC hearing schedule. So please uh, click on that and get it uh, attached to your calendars. And don't forget, you know, and we don't want to have the day after. Gee, I missed that opportunity because, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, it's the time is now for doing this. There's a question, uh, Dave, that came up. I was in Seattle the other day. And whenever, whenever you go to Seattle and you're heading the city from the airport, you can't but notice, you know, the football stadium and the baseball stadium together. And it's lined up right along the port. And the question is, you know, did... You know, were you looking at what th that interaction between the port operations in Seattle and their ballparks when you thought about Howard Terminal and how that, you know, how it might provide some uh, uh, benchmarks or similarities? Well, in fact, we, ac we actually visited Seattle 
and looked at some options. And I'll defer to Liz. It sounds like she has a point on that as well. Yeah, no, I was just going to go back to the CDC and, and Dave, you can go. I just wanted to uh, say that, you know, if I wasn't clear before, the entire labor community, with the exception of a few port unions, uh, wholeheartedly uh, supports this project. And in fact, as the vice president of the California Labor Federation, we just submitted a letter to the BCDC to ensure that we ask their support. And then we have people call into that meeting because you know this is a once in a generation opportunity uh, for thousands of workers uh, to have union jobs for years to come. So I just wanted to add that note in terms of labor support and um, the entire labor movement here in the Bay Area. Yeah, you, you've been unequivocal, labor has, on that, and we thank, thank you. Yeah, Dave, on the, on the Seattle uh, question. Yeah, you know, I think Seattle is a good model, and it's been extremely successful and many of the transportation consultants that were working on this project both for the city and the A's are familiar with that and actually worked on the Seattle um, transportation plan that included having mitigations and plans to keep freight separate from pedestrians and people and you know that's that's a really important part of the seaport compatibility that those things can coexist and that's why there's grade separated crossings that are going to be added as part of this project that's why there's almost $20 million in railroad safety. I mean, my office is in Jack London Square. Every day when I walk to, you know, Starbucks or Everett and Jones Barbecue, I have to walk across the tracks. It's not a safe environment. It needs investment. It's long overdue. And this project is going to help alleviate that beyond just Howard. It's going to be the entire Jack London Square corridor. So I think there's just a lot of positives like that that can come out of the ballpark and the, the attention it's gonna to bring to the waterfront. And I think that will be positive really for, for all stakeholders, hopefully. Th thanks, and uh, you know, there are a couple of questions. I think you may have covered them, Christy, but you know, there continue to be a few questions about the, you know, the cargo operations and, the, and, and this. Can you just clarify maybe again for, for the people who are watching how you see you know, that conflict working out? Yeah, sure. And again, I think this is just about, um, you know, the way that the shipping industry has evolved and what a modern, efficient container terminal or railroad terminal looks like, right? There, the shipping has this huge advantage of, you know, unlike passenger traffic at an airport or something where you care where you land and where you take off from, you know, it's really about uh, what's the least resistance in terms of getting uh, the, the cargo from point A to point B. And they really seek out huge economies of scale. I mean, there's, there's just huge conglomerates involved. There's huge logistics programs involved. And so the reality is just that Howard has been passed by. You know, could you, there's a ship lay berthing there now from the federal government. You know, could you put a ship up to that dock today? Um, it's sitting there. Yeah, you could, but would it be any purpose? Would it be economical? Would it be operationally uh, reasonable? No. And that's why the terminal operators left. They asked to leave, uh, get out of a long-term lease. Uh, the port ultimately uh, settled and agreed with them on that. And that's why we built mega terminals. That's the future of shipping. Howard is the past of shipping. Um, so I think, and it's just inefficient to think about standing. I mean, it'd be kind of like Walmart taking over the boarded up little tiny store on your main street in some town in the middle of the country, right? Where that's just not how they do business. That's not how it's going to work. So just to put a point on that, I, and it's not, it's the past. It's not the future. Yeah. I did want to comment as the chair of the region's uh, ferry system, WIDA, you know, we're really excited about the chance to serve uh, Howard Terminal because that's where our that's you know we're very very close by and so uh, Dave and and Mayor uh, don't you think that traveling on the ferries is just the best and going to an A's game uh, by ferry will be the, the ultimate opportunity? I'm all for it too. Also, it can it can get people used to traveling on the water, which is I think a great thing. We should do more of that. If you go to Europe and places like that, it's done all the time. So I think it's Long overdue, Jim. So. One, one last question here is that the Bay Area Council has a delegation, including myself, going to Washington, D.C. next week from Tuesday to Thursday. I think, Mayor Schaff, you may be 
there around the same time. So what can, you know, what, you know, I realize that projects like this draw funding from uh, numerous sources, uh, local, state, federal, private. What, what can we do while we're in Washington to enhance uh, the potential of the project? I'll, I'll start, but Jim, uh, Oakland is going to be submitting a mega small grant request for what we call Town for All, Transforming Oakland's Waterfront Neighborhoods. Get it? Town, Town for All. Uh, and it really is a series of improvements that, like I said before, ballpark or no ballpark are really needed to increase safety, to, increase, to, to make goods movement uh, more secure, to increase climate uh, resilience, and to uh, advance our racial equity goals as far as waterfront access. And so that um, we will be sure you have the latest on that grant. Yeah. And I'm very pleased that the MTC has endorsed this project as the Bay Area's priority project for this particular funding stream, the mega small. So, um, you know, it's a very specific project, town for all, uh, and we hope that you sing its praises while you are in Washington, D.C., because that bipartisan infrastructure dollars, those should be coming to the Bay Area, and this is a great investment for them. Yeah, they are a major reason that uh, we're going in the first place, and we want to get, you know, we want to be able to be specific, and we will be. And uh, we'll sing uh, often and loudly in a couple of days, and maybe we'll maybe we'll catch you back there. Any uh, final uh, words of encouragement or uh, you know call to action from the group before we let you uh, move on with your day? I guess my last thing is please correct people when they say that this is going to be some theft of taxpayer dollars. This is an incredibly responsible deal that literally takes the money generated by the project itself and invests it in public infrastructure and community benefits, including 3,000 units of housing on the site, of more than 1,000 affordable units on and off the site, public parks, union jobs. Um, this is a great thing for Oakland, but it is very financially responsible. Oakland A's uh, president Dave uh, Dave Cavill, um, you guys, are, I know you're working with this. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Christy McKinney, the chief operating officer of the Port of Oakland, Liz Ortega, the executive secretary treasurer of the Alameda uh, Labor Council. You make a terrific team, and uh, we will be uh, behind you 100. percent We're your fans. We'll show up, and we'll get this project done. And I just want to hold one of those shovels uh, soon uh, when the first dirt uh, moves away from the earth there and uh, and we can talk about tickets later. So thank you very, very much. Uh, very exciting opportunity uh, for our A's and for, for Oakland. Let's go A's, let's go Oakland. Thanks very much for participating today. And thanks everyone for uh, tuning in. We appreciate it. We had a nice sized crowd for this. Bye everybody. Thank you.